thank the Lord for good singing, amen, and for the presence of the Holy Ghost. I thank God that he came looking for an old wretched sinner like me, pulled me up out of the mire, out of the mud, out of the lifestyle I was living, uh, without anybody telling me one prayer, changed it all, I talk about it often, but I'll never forget that day, December 31st, I got saved when I was a young boy, but... Whenever I asked the Lord, I couldn't run no farther as far as in this life. Uh, the Lord saved me as a young boy, but um, I, I, He saved me. And people don't like to hear it, but He saved me in 2014. 12-year-old boy saved me. Pulled me to the altar. I told Him to save me from a devil's burn of hell, to forgive me of my sin, and He did. I grew up, uh, went out in the world, did, did some things I didn't, but long story short, it's not about me, it's about Him. And December 31st, 2019, started a new journey in my life without a single soul telling me to change my life. God changed it. Called me to preach, can't explain it. I was doing construction work, going to be making $40 an hour uh, at least. I was operating equipment that 35, 40-year-old men couldn't because I was NCCR certified. New people was working to go to MSD. Had life planned out. And God called me to Main Cross Baptist Church to be a preacher. Amen. I, I thank God for what He could do. And He's able. He's able. He's a willing God. He's a just God. He's righteous. He's holy. He's a, he's a God that sits up on his throne. And I listened to a message by Jack Howes the other day, and he said, God is still on his throne. And he took this old microphone, and he picked it up, and he set it up on the pulpit, and he said, I found my glasses. God is on the throne. I lost my glasses. God's off his throne. And he picked it back up. He said, I could pay my bills this month. God's on his throne. He threw it down on the ground. He said, I couldn't afford my bills this month. God's off his throne. He picked it up and said, I'm having a good day. God's on his throne. Threw it back on the ground. Said, I'm having a bad day. God's off his throne. Then he got into the message and said, no matter what you say, no matter the cancer, no matter the diseases of this world, God is on his throne. Amen. I thank God for somebody that preaches the truth, a Holy Ghost feel message. We need help in the times that we're living in. And I want to preach on a message tonight. Give me a taste of that honey. Amen. When we start to get away from that honey, you get a taste of it. You won't want to get away from it. Amen. God knows what He's doing. God has perfect way of doing things. Man fails you. Woman fails you. This life has nothing to offer you more than the grave if you don't have Jesus. More than a place called hell. There, there, there's a place called hell and there's a place called heaven. I, I just want to thank the Lord for that tonight. I'd like to read you something small real fast uh, before we get in the message. Uh, a quote by John Bunyan. John Bunyan said, I will stay in prison till the moss grows on my eyelids rather than disobey God. They threw him in prison. John Bunyan, they wanted him to sign a paper saying that he wouldn't preach no more. I believe it was, uh, Brother Charlie. Maybe I'm saying that wrong. Was it, uh, they wanted him to sign a paper saying, I won't preach Jesus no more, right? And he said, he told the guard, he said, if my, I may lose my mind one of these days, and my hand may go up to sign that paper, and I want you to do me a favor, sir. He said, if my hand ever goes up to sign that paper, I want you to take that sword on the side of your body and sever my hand from my body before I sign that paper. I believe you got a taste of that heavenly honey, don't you? I believe old Paul got a taste of that heavenly honey whenever he, was, whenever he came in touch with the Lord. I believe that man that was hanging on the cross got a touch of that heavenly honey. Something sweet about that name of Jesus. I thank God there's something sweet about His Word. There's something sweet about prayer time. There's something sweet about being around God's people. There's something sweet about being different from this old world. There's something sweet about having something inside of you rather than the way you dress, rather than the way you talk, but to have character about you. I believe this old world's lost the way of character. They've lost who, how they talk. They've lost how they carry themselves. We have the world, they wear their pants down below their butt. But when the men think it's okay to sag and they think it's okay, the women think it's okay to wear the yoga pants and to be like the world, and they have no character. They haven't got a taste of the heavenly honey, amen. But when you get a taste of that heavenly honey, it don't matter what the world tells you. It don't matter how far you get out, how bad people talk about you. You'll want to draw close to an almighty God when you get close. 
of that heavenly honey. It's sweet, amen. There's something sweet about the name of Jesus. I know, I know I've grown up around some double-sided Christians. I've done, grown up where they, they can leave outside of the church house and cuss on the first, uh, church house steps. I've seen people do it. Double-sided Christians. I've grown up around it somewhat. I'm not talking about my own family necessarily, but people that was church house members where they walk in, put their hands up and praise God. I believe the problem was that they have not got a taste of the real sweet heavenly honey from an almighty God. Whenever I got close to the Lord, He started cleaning up my life without anybody telling me. It was the Holy Ghost. God started me to tell me to dress right, to sell my clothes. People started saying, well, why do you have to sell them clothes that, they're, that you're wearing? What's wrong with them? I started to say, well, God told me these clothes are too expensive to be wearing. There's people that's homeless out in Africa. They don't have food on their body, and you have a $200, $300 pair of jeans wrapped around your butt. God told me to get rid of them things. God told me to get rid of the rap music and the R&B music and the country music. I might have not had somebody to tell me, but I praise God that that the Holy Ghost was able to. There's something about that sweet, heavenly honey. I believe the problem in this world is, is they've lost their eyes on the prize of heaven. On the sweetness of heaven. When you get your eyes off yourself and you get your eyes off this world, you get your eyes on an almighty God, you'll realize there's something sweet about drawing nigh unto God. It's hard to believe that people that Say they believe in God, but don't obey the book. It's hard to say that you're a cashier if you don't know how to open the drawer. It's hard to say that you're an alcoholic, let's say, and you never drunk a drop of alcohol. You can say it, but does that mean that you are? I believe that some people in their life that are Christians, that are preachers, and they say, I got a taste of the heavenly honey, but they've never got more than the dose. They've never got a dose of the Holy Ghost, amen. They got a dose of mama filled religion, daddy filled religion, and there's nothing more to it than religion. There's nothing more to it. And the thing is, is God's word is sweet. And John Bunyan and Paul and the men of God in this Bible got a taste of the heavenly honey. And the reason that we've lost our burdens and the reason that we lost our prayer life is that we don't get close enough to get a taste of that sweet heavenly honey. I believe that the church house is searching for the heavenly honey with a bitter heart. They're tasting the rock. Amen. It said that there's honey flowing out of the rock. I believe that they're tasting some earthly rock. A rock don't have a good taste. Go out here and lick some dirty rock that's sat out and it's been corroded and it's been broken down over time and muddy waters run over it. It's going to taste filthy. I believe that people searching for the honey with a bitter heart. I believe people searching for the honey, but they don't want to read their Bible. They want to touch from God, but they don't draw nigh to God. They don't have a touch of God on their life. The family does. The friends do. Where's the touch of God in your life? I want to give you a message that will encourage you tonight. I pray if you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 8, verse 18, and we'll get out of here. I want to get a touch of that heavenly honey. Amen. I want to have some sweetness in my life. I want to have some good times in my life, in this Christian life. I, I want to be able to step out on faith that said I did something for God with joy in my heart, not with the bitterness of this world, not with the depression of this world, not with the worry and the anxiety of this world, but with the sweetness of God in my soul. I believe too many of us are bitter. Bitter, amen. What's keeping you from the honey? What's keeping you from the honey? Let's turn to Acts chapter 8, verse 18. These are some very powerful uh, verses in the Scripture. It says, uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 18. And when Simon saw, if you'd like to stand up, I, I'm a little bit sidetracked today, but pray for me. I need, I need the Lord to help me. Acts chapter 8, verse 18. It said, And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Hmm saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He wanted to buy it with money of this world that's going to perish. But Peter said unto him, Thy money, money perish with thee. 
Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Mm. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness. And pray God if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. Dear Lord, a Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to help me tonight. Hide me behind the cross. Help us, God, to be a powerhouse for you. Help us, God, not to have powerless singing. Help us, Lord, not to have powerless preaching, powerless prayers, powerless Bible reading, powerless Bible studies. God, we're standing in a time where we need the power of God to rest upon every single last one of our lives. Lord, I pray that you'd send a revival tonight to Main Cross Baptist Church to the hearts of these people. Oh, God, if you just touch one soul tonight, that would bring them to this altar, get on fire for you. You could fill this whole church house up up with one person. God, let me be that one person. Help us, God, to be the one that steps out on faith. Help us, God, to be the one that, uh, that, uh, that's different from this world. Lord, I pray all these things, buying back the devil, we're begging you. Help us, God, not to just be in another church service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd like to get through this message real quick and uh, you all may get home. I want to first start off and say that money cannot buy God's free gifts. You can take that, you can take it to the bank, you can do all you want, tithe all you want, give it all to God in this life, but the money can't buy God's gifts. Money can't buy it, it's given freely by the gift of God because He decided to give them to an old wretched sinner like me and you. There's gifts Brother Charlie has that I don't have. There's gifts that I have that Brother Charlie don't have. God has a selective way of doing things that me and you do not understand on a different time period than me and you understand. Because thou art God. Amen. He is God. He is sweet and He's perfect. He came along and he said he seen the power and he wanted to get a hold of this thing so bad, bad enough, that he would give money for it. He offered them money saying, give me also this power. You know what I think? is I think this whole world thinks that they can have power to go out in this world and witness. They think they can have power to preach because of some generation that they grew up in where mom and dad did everything right and they think the power's handed down. They think the power's handed down from generation to generation. I think that the times that we're living in, that they think that the biggest church, you have the biggest church, we'll receive the most power. We could draw in the biggest crowd, we receive the most power. God gave us the church buses, He gave us the money, He gives us everything we need. I know that God's power is in our building. They're lost as the devil. They've never got a touch of that heavenly honey that comes from God's throne, amen. There's something different from God's honey whenever He supplies it. It's a scary place when your heart isn't right with the Lord. Let me tell you something. This man's heart was not right with the Lord if he thought that he could buy the Holy Ghost with money. Was not heart with, uh, right with the heart. Uh, his heart wasn't right with the Lord. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. I'm thankful today there's a man of God that did not take the money and say, hey, let me tell you something that just came to mind. Is there's people in this world that would deceive you and say, hey, send me $1,000 in the mail. Joyce Meyer Ministries and the T.D. Jake Ministries and the Joel Osteen Ministries. Hey, send $1,000 in the mail and God will save your soul. Send $1,000 in the mail and God will bless you. Send $1,000 in the mail and buy this mustard seed that you carry around in your pocket and God will give you the faith that you need. But there's a man of God that said, Thy money perish with you. Amen. There's somebody that dared to be different from the world and not take the man's money. There's a man that his heart was right with the Lord, and there was another man that thought that he could buy the gift from God. He said, But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right 
in the sight of God. It's a scary place when your heart is right with the Lord. Repent thereof. Now watch this. It gets really good. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, is what Peter said unto Simon. And pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Peter said, hey, go get along with God. Beg him to forgive you for the wickedness of thinking that the gift of God can be purchased with money. Simon got saved. Simon was a saved man, but his heart was not right with God. Is what I believe, amen. And he said, Repent thereof of thy wickedness. The thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which have spoken come upon me. Did you notice that Peter said, Hey, go get along with God and pray that he'll forgive you. And you know what he said? You know what Simon said? He said, hey, why don't you pray to the Lord for me? He said, hey, get along with God and pray to, me, pray to the Lord for me. You can't do nothing. Nobody else can get along with God for you. You got to get along with God. Nobody else can change your lifestyle. God has to do it. Nobody else can give you a touch of that heavenly honey. God has to do it. You know why that he had bitterness in his heart? It's because his heart was not right with God. He was in the goal of bitterness. And what happens is, is we take our eyes off of the prize, we take our eyes off the scripture because our heart is not right with God. Doesn't mean you're necessarily lost, but you can get upon your life when you're full of iniquity, when you're full of bitterness, when you're full of all these different things of this world. And that's where Simon was at in his life. He was in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And it got so bad, he said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. Doesn't the Bible say there's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus? There's one man that died on the cross for me and you. There ain't nobody else that could go before the throne of God for you. There's nobody else that could change God's mind for you. It's up to you to get right with God. It's up to you to get the bitterness out of your heart. It's up to you to get the power of God upon your life. You know why this thing ain't striving? It's because maybe you have not gotten right with God. Maybe you haven't gotten the taste of the heavenly honey. It's the thing is, is we get so used and so comfortable to church service after church service. And we get in a scary place when our heart is right with the Lord. Bitterness will rob us of God's blessings. Bitterness spreads like wildfire and contagious. You ever notice when somebody comes around you and they're bitter, and if you ain't right with God, you get bitter, and then the next person next to you get bitter, and you got a whole bitter household because me and you are humans. And we have emotions and we have feelings that stand in the way of God's blessing and we rob what God wants to do in our lives because we get bitterness and iniquity inside of our hearts. How many people in this Bible could have done something great for the glory and honor of God, but their feelings got in the way? God, let me, can, uh, give me permission to sit on thy right hand or thy left hand. And if they talked about marriage whenever the rapture happens and, and all these different things, things that didn't matter, amen? And emotions and feelings stand in the way between us and an almighty God's blessings spreading our life and us being used. Iniquity causes separation between our relationship with God. On our end, God stays in the same place and he says, I'm here for you, I'm here to answer your prayers, and I'm here to walk alongside of you. But we stray away when the bitterness comes in our life. You ever got so bitter you got bitter with God? You got bitter on the word of God. You, you got bitter on prayer. You got bitter on the church because of something that happened. Me and you all go through bitter times in our life. You know, to understand bitterness, you had to taste the sweetness. And to understand sweetness, you had to taste the bitterness. You understand good, you had to understand wrong. And to understand right, you had to understand wrong. To understand good, you had to understand evil. To understand positive, you had to understand negative. To understand white, you had to understand black. Amen. You have to have... Both sides of the story. 
Praise God. I'm thankful today for that. The closer you get to God, the farther you get away from bitterness and from this old world. The Bible says back in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, looking diligently, lest any may have fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. It takes root and it takes hold of mine in your life when bitterness sinks in and it just takes hold on the Christian life and we just want to give up. We just want to take it off, lay it all down and say, God, I give up. While there's lost souls going to a place called hell. While there's family members going to a place called hell. While we are suffering in this life with the thoughts that me and you have because we strayed away because of bitterness. You know what happened with Cain and Abel? Cain got bitter and he slayed his brother Abel. You will do things out of the flesh when you're bitter. You will say, let me tell you what a bitter person says. I'm not bitter. What are you talking about? I'm not bitter. What are you talking about? I'm bitter. You got problems. You got problems. Uh, what are you talking about? Our marriage ain't right. What are you to tell me about how I'm talking to you? What are you to tell me about our financial situation? And what are you to tell me about what car that I should buy and the way I should put my shoes on and how to raise our children and what church I should go to? You know what happens? And a bitter person is never bitter. It's hard for somebody who's bitter to say that they're bitter. Because there's a reason that they got there. And there's a reason that you stay and it's contagious. And it likes to stick around like wildfire. And it likes to stay there and burn and feed itself with the emotions of this world. Amen. Amen. The emotions of this world. All it is is an emotion. We need a mindset to stick our eyes on God. What's keeping you from the honey tonight? What's keeping you from having honey in your heart and saying, hey, Lord, I want to find the honey in this situation, not the bitterness. I want to find the honey in why May Cross's uh, uh, numbers are low, why people leave the church, why people change and they want a different Bible. I want to see the honey in these situations, not the bitterness. The problem is, is people's not seeking the honey no more. What's keeping you from the honey? Maybe because your heart's not right with God. Money can't buy the free gifts of God. It's a gift to taste of the heavenly honey. It's a gift of God to have peace that passeth all understanding. It's a gift of God to be able to walk down life's journey and say, I had a good life. It's a gift. You didn't earn it. It's a gift of God to say, hey, I'm able to get up and to go to work with joy in my soul. It's a gift of God to say that God's given me joy and peace and long suffering and gentleness and meekness and patience. That's a virtue. It is a gift of God to be separate from this world. It's a gift. It's a gift. We all need help from an almighty God. Amen. What's keeping you from the honey? Maybe it's the root of all bitterness. It's bringing it up, troubling your soul. And it said, and thereby many be defiled. Bitterness keeps you from the honey. Let's turn to James chapter 3 and verse number 11. I, be, I believe too many people are seeking for the rock, but they've never got a taste of the heavenly honey. I believe too many people are uh, building on the wrong, solid foundation, the rock of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the rock. He's our solid foundation, separate from sinners from this old world. What's holding you back from your blessing could possibly be because your heart's not right with the Lord. Possibly could be because your heart's not right with the Lord. It's a burden that's been on my soul. Too many people rob God's blessings in this life, and they're so miserable because they just don't get right with the Lord. I have peace in my soul, Brother Charles, tonight, and the things that with the Lord. I always could do more. I could always do more. I could always go out and do more. But I'm going to tell you something. When you get right with the Lord, He'll give you some peace that passeth all understanding. He'll give you some rest along life's journey, journeys. He'll give you, a, it says, a workman's worthy of his meat. Amen. God just freely gives gifts when you get your heart right with the Lord. It's nothing we can earn or deserve. We need a taste of that heavenly honey. What's keeping you from the honey tonight? What's keeping you? James chapter 3, verse 11. This sounds like many of the Christians today. Doeth the fountain send forth water at the same place, sweet water and bitter? Sweet water and bitter. Both sides, double-sided emotions. Two-faced, 
living one way inside the church and a different way outside of the church. Everything's happy-dory. Inside the church, got a, got a smile on their face, comes in, everything looks fine, and they go out in this world, and they treat their, they treat their uh, houses the wrong way, they treat their kids the wrong way, treat their friends the wrong way, go to the grocery store and treat the cashiers the wrong way, but they come to the church house and it's happy-dory. Thank you, brother, praying for you. I love you. i do anything for you, but go out in this old world to the people that need help and the people that's dying without Jesus that truly need help. The church needs help, but let me tell you something. Is that people that saved, they have Jesus. Love those which persecute you. Give them hope, those which don't have no hope. Bring them the gospel of peace and tell them about Jesus. Tell them what the true heavenly honey tastes like and give them a testimony every once in a while instead of just walking by and just say, just you know, looking at somebody that's homeless the wrong way. Them people need Jesus too. They need a taste of that heavenly honey and they could change just like that. I, my life changed whenever I got saved. For the rest of my life, one night changed me for eternity. I got saved, born again by the grace of God. Because one man preached on a place called hell. And God drew me with his spirit to be saved. All it takes is for you to go along life's journey and say, Hey, Jesus loves you. And he'll save your soul from a place called hell. He could save the drug addict and the murderer and the alcoholic. All they need is a taste of that sweet, heavenly honey. Amen. It's sweet tonight. It's sweet. It says, Doeth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. You know what some of us do is we lie against ourselves. We say everything's fine when everything ain't fine. Everything's good. Life's good. I put a smile on my face and I do everything I'm supposed to do. But deep down inside, you're just like this old world, bitter as can be. Why is that? Maybe because your heart's not right with the Lord. Maybe you haven't got a touch from the heavenly honey for a while. What's keeping you from the honey? Glory not if you have bitterness in your heart. For you lie... Lie, lie not against the truth. Watch this. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. So I want to talk and stop there just for a second. Does anybody here that's a saved, born-again Christian want to get close to the devil? Do you want to have characteristics like the devil? Do you want to say that, hey... I'm living like the devil's crowd. I'm no different. I have nothing different than other than religion. I'm just as bitter as they are. I worry the same way they do. And the only thing that separates me from them is my church, my car is gone out of the parking lot on a Sunday morning from my driveway. The only thing that separates me from my neighbor is my car ain't in the driveway on a Sunday morning. The Bible says this. It says, do not glory and lie not against the truth if there's bitter or strife in your hearts. That's a scary thing to say because then it goes on to say this wisdom descendeth not from above but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Somebody that comes in the church house and worships but that's not a true worshiper. You know what God's looking for? The true worshipers. God don't hear the worship from somebody that don't know how to forgive and be bitter and comes in and plays church for a little bit of time. God's looking for the true worshipers with their hearts right with God. If you come in the house of God and you say that you worship and you're bitter outside in the world, I'm going to tell you right now that that's not what God's looking for. God's not looking for false worship. Even the devils worship the Lord. God's looking for the true worshipers. True worshipers got a taste of the heavenly honey and a little bit different from this world. What's keeping you from the honey? Maybe your heart's not right with the Lord. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. 
Psalm 119, 103 says, How sweet are the words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Causes of bitterness, not enough prayer. Causes of bitterness, not enough reading the Bible. Causes of bitterness, anger in the heart. Causes of bitterness, discouragement. Causes of bitterness, laying outside of church. God wants us to draw nigh unto Him. What's keeping you from the honey? Ways to avoid business or uh, bitterness? Stick close to the honey at all times. Stick close to the honey. God's word is sweet to our taste. The devil can't taste of that honey. And the devil wants us to get as far away from God as we can. Come get a taste of that heavenly honey, God will bless it. Psalms 8, 81, 16, it says, He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat. And with honey out of the rocks should I have satisfied thee. God's honey always satisfies the soul. Quit tasting the rock and taste of the heavenly honey. Psalms chapter 66, verse 18, it says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You want to know something? I want to go back to the book of Acts for a second. And we're going to read that verse. It says in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. What does Simon have in his heart, Brother Dennis? What does he say he had in his heart? Bitterness and iniquity. And it says back there in the Bible, back in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And Simon came unto Peter, and he said, Peter, pray unto God that these things come not upon me. Pray unto God, because my heart's not right with the Lord. I need you to pray for me. Hey, I'm begging you that God will not allow these things to come upon me. When he could have went directly to the Lord. And God would have satisfied his soul, sat him down, picked him up, set him right back on the rock, gave him a taste of that heavenly honey, gave him a pat on the butt, said, get back out on that battlefield. There's no time to be bitter. There's no time to worry. There's no time to doubt. And there's no time to waver because this is a battle. We need a taste of that heavenly honey to keep on going every now and then. We need a refreshment from God's word. If you're a Christian today and you're sitting here and you say, I don't need a refreshment, you need to be the first one around this altar because we need a refreshment every single day from the Word of God. A day without reading the Bible is a day wasted. As the old preacher said, I don't know exactly who it was, but I've heard it in times past. What's keeping you from the honey? Maybe because your heart's not right with the Lord. You say, preacher, I'm doing everything right. It doesn't make your heart with the Lord. You say, preacher, I got everything lined up. God's good to me. God's real good to me also. I've been blessed, but I'm going to tell you something. I have feelings and I have emotions that can get me down just like anybody else. Got food on my table, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, roof over my head, a family that loves me, a church house family that I pray that loves me. I got people that care about me and would give me things that I need, but I still every now and then get a little bit bitter. I still every now and then get a bit, little bit worried and a little bit fearful. You know why? I need a touch of that heavenly honey every single day of my life. <laughs> Praise God, we're supposed to be set, back, set apart from this world. God will give you a touch of that heavenly honey to your tongue that you will never want to get away from it. Whenever you get snuggled up close to Him, you start getting them touches of God every now and then in your life. And you start seeing God move in your life. I'm going to tell you, you want to stick close to it every single day. What keeps me going is this old book right here. I felt like giving up before. You say, well, you've only done this for two years. The devil beats me up like anybody else. The closer you get to God, the closer the devil's going to get to you. Amen. Closer, it says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But let me tell you, the problem is me and you as Christians, me and you as human beings, we don't always resist the devil. We don't resist the devil every single time he comes knocking on the door. We don't always say, hey, I got God on my side. Back up, devil. And if you say that you do every time, it's a lie. The devil will take a niche and turn it into a mile very, very fast. He's the author of confusion. He's out to seek, kill, and destroy. He's out here working in spiritual places and high places. He's working in the government. He's working in the school systems. He's working through the money. He's working through the preachers. He's working through the churches. 
because people's not right with God. People think it's okay to just say, hey, Miss Janet, will you pray for me? And they think her prayers are going to get through to God before mine does. They think somebody else's prayers is going to get through. you got to get along with God. Your heart has to get right with God. You have to hit your knees. You have to read your Bible. You have to get your butt up, go to church. You have to go to work. You have to do these things for yourself. Young person, old person, no matter who you are, I'm just going to shoot it straight down the line. I love the Lord. I praise God, but this life gets rough. It gets bitter. It gets us down. And me and you need a taste from that heavenly honey. And tonight's the night to get a taste and to get a little bit of that refreshment that you're looking for. Get a little bit of that help to get you back on your feet and to get you back out in this world, and God will get you going. Me and you need a refreshment of that heavenly honey. Some of you got a taste, but you haven't tasted it for a while. Amen. Some of you got a taste of it. But God says, open up and I will fill your mouth. Amen. Open up and I will let your cup overflow. It ain't just a dab of honey. He don't just touch the biscuit. Amen. He fills it all up and he gives you something that will satisfy your soul for the long run. Where's the power in the church houses? We got too many Simons that think somebody else is going to get it done for them. Pray for me, preacher. You go out and witness. You do your job. You do what you're supposed to do. You go make the visits. You go do this and do that. I love what I do. I do it with passion. I do it with joy. But let me tell you, is when you rely on me more than you rely on yourselves, you are not right with God. you got to rely on God yourself. Just because I failed doesn't mean you should. Just because I didn't do what I was supposed to do doesn't mean you shouldn't. It's always pouring the blame game. What did Eve say? Satan beguiled me. He tricked me into doing this. You know what happened? It's up the pleasurable to the sight. Drew Eve to sin. It's up the pleasurable comes along life's journey and draws us to sin. Whether it be a new video game, whether it be a new social media app, whether it be a new girl or a new guy or something else and it will take our eyes off God, get you somebody that will walk alongside with you, carry you along and help you, push you to keep going because I'm going to tell you something, we all need a taste of that heavenly honey and we all need a little bit of help and there's enough to go around. Amen. There's enough to spread. Now I'm just going to tell you something. Just because bitterness spreads like wildfire, God's got enough heavenly honey to spread like wildfire like no other. It will take off. If you get right, Dennis will get right. Somebody else will get right. The Bible says he'll save you and your whole household. Does it not? Do you believe that? Do you believe God can do it? He says you have not because you ask not. I believe God's able and he's worthy. Let's come to this old-fashioned altar, get a refreshment from God. Just say, well, preacher, that message didn't help me tonight. Well, maybe your heart's not right with the Lord. What's keeping you from the heavenly honey? Maybe you got your ears closed and your mouth shut and your eyes closed and you don't want nothing to do with it. Because you just want to sit and waller in your bitterness. What's the problem? Is me and you have to get right with the Lord ourselves. Right. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Yes. I ask you, Lord, to help us this night. Draw people to this altar. Give us all the refreshment that we need. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.